Hi all, this is Terry here. I am now going to do a reaction recording to identity exploration for mentors and mentees uh, that is led by Rainier Athletes. Um, I know there's a lot of science on identity formation. Mainly the science is the better you know yourself and your own identity, the better you are as a person out in the world. And so helping youth uh, discover their identities and to know who they are as people helps them grow as people and be better out in the world also. So this is uh, from them. And so I'm going to uh, set up the um, technology now. So bear with me for just a moment. Um, present, share screen, share screen. Um, and that button so many buttons to press just to get there and here we go um yeah so you should see me now as a little box down here and the uh presentation as the big box here we go oh um well hello everybody it's nice to see you all. Um, thank you so much for being here today with us and um, learning a little bit about identity exploration with Rainier Athletes. Um, I'll, you know, as people are settling in and logging on, I'll go ahead and kick us off. But welcome. Um, and my name is Raquel, and I am part of the community team at Rainier Athletes. And my name is Jacob Tobis. Um, I am also at Rainier Athletes. And um, before we kind of jump into the details of the topics, we just wanted to give like an overview of what is the mentoring organization that that we work at. Um, and I also just wanted to add, Raquel was kind of saying as some folks were joining, we are new to this Excelevance platform. And while it has been beautiful to navigate, um, we also have Jeanette from um, Mentor Washington too that will help kind of figure out any tech issues that we, that we might might have, but we're going to be projecting and trying to use polls and breakouts and all the phenomenal functionality. So um, bear with us if we need to take an extra minute as we work through those different things. Um, Technology. Yeah, thank you again, everyone, for joining. Excited to share a little bit about some of the practices that Rainier Athletes does and um, exploring identity alongside you all. Um, we are a long-term mentoring and community engagement organization. Uh, we're working with students and their families beginning in fourth grade and then continue with them through middle school and ultimately through high school graduation um, and beyond now actually. We're just celebrating our, our 10 year anniversary. So we have a few classes that have gone past senior year in mm -hmm. high school, which is which is pretty exciting. Um, the connection with today and the hope and well-being um, theme of this conference is that at Rainier Athletes, we've really found that the hope and, and well-being for students and families that we're working with are pretty tightly tied to a sense of belonging and a sense of identity. Um, so today we will share a little bit of information about how the Rainier Athlete mentors and mentees explore their identities. Um, and then hopefully at the end, we'll have some time for you to actually practice for yourselves um, in some of the breakout groups. Nice. Yeah. So as Jacob was mentioning, um, this will be a quick brief overview of what to expect today, but we will be going in and out of some breakout rooms, kind of getting to know each other, having a bit of conversation surrounding identity, and then um, coming back as a big group as a whole and reflecting. I have no idea how breakout rooms will show up in this format. So I will uh, probably either skip past the breakout room or um, maybe we'll see what they did in the breakout rooms. I don't know, it's a mystery. I'm guessing how um, that was going, but essentially um, we want to talk about identity statements today, uh, why we think it's important um, for our mentors and mentees to have those conversations, and then also um, show a tool that our RA mentors use to um, have those conversations that have been really helpful and supportive in the past. Nice. Okay. We're going to break out and meet each other in a, in a minute here. And I, I know you all are just joining from the plenary and, and potentially all over the place, but part of what we found um, 
for the mentors and mentees that are having and exploring identity with each other and, and conversations about identity with each other is that it it really is important to at least start to get to know one another um, in order to better have some of these deeper conversations. So that's actually, I mean, you, we've, we've all kind of heard of icebreakers and do a million of those probably every day, or I'll speak for myself, I often do them. Um, but the, the purpose of having a type of icebreaker-ish breakout here is really to give you a chance at least to sort of get to know one another. Um, some of you might know one another already, which is great, uh, but at least hear each other's names and really just some general information about um, answering one of these two questions that you can see on the slide here that we'll include in the chat. So um, we will break you out into groups of, I think about five or so. Well, they're going to do the breakout. So I'm going to ask you all now to uh, maybe type into the comments below. Do you feel that your identity has changed over the past few years? Why or why not? Or why do you believe mentorship is important? So just take a moment and type that into the comments. I think identity for me is a, uh, it's a developmental process, right? So if we are a developmental process, then we are developing through time and it should change over time, whether that is our, um, like the faith development process is generally that you go from this fantasy version of God when you're a toddler to a very concrete version of God when you're like middle school age to more conceptual understandings of who God is and God's nature as you grow through into adulthood. And so like those things change over time. So I have to imagine that identity development also changes over time. And, there is Piaget's um, developmental process. So if we think of it in terms of identity as a developmental process, I think the thing to know is that no place in your development is either good or bad. Development just is. It is not a judgmental place to have. So if you're at one place, we should never have ourselves looking down on people at another place in their developmental process because who's to say what is better and what is not better that's not up to us it just is development just is so that's my comment on that and i'm going to skip past the breakout room stuff hopefully um let's see if i can make this happen so we're trying to figure this out so we're not like drowning each all right there's huh? we'll do another. Oh, now i'm gonna go back sorry about this I'm trying to get this exactly Just a little hiccup it's okay we... um a little bit more for breaking people into breaking groups okay we'll just start here um are they coming back Ooh. maybe not yet they're quiet okay it's still quiet why is mentoring important to you um so if you want to go ahead and choose one of those oh left. awesome <laughs> so much fun Experimenting, experimental uh, technology. All right, I'm going to skip forward a little more, a little more, maybe a lot more. Ego. <laughs> Athletes and um, talking about identity. Safety. All right, here nice. we go. Okay, well, as people are coming back in from those breakout groups, thank you for being patient with us. Um, as we're learning and figuring out the platform. But yes, um, we're gonna, come, coming off of the question that some of you may have answered on to why or how and why has your identity changed over the past couple of years? Um, we thought that would be a perfect lead in to this video we're about to show you. Um, so essentially, um, some of you may or may not recognize this celebrity on the screen. Um, this is Billie. Billie Eilish. I uh, have you know. I know who it is. Yeah, she's changed a lot of her time. In the beginning, she was afraid to show her feminine identity. Billie Eilish, and unfortunately, she is not associated with Rainier Athletes whatsoever. But she is. Um, she did do this project with Vanity Fair um, that is very similar to kind of what we want to do here at Rainier Athletes and um, talking about identity statement. And so um, 
we'll be showing you this video um, and it's basically the same interview over a course of five years. I'm sure if you, I think on YouTube, if you search it up, it's been six or seven years now, but at the time of us making this video, it was five years. Um, so pay attention to um, things that have changed um, or answers that have stayed the same, and then we'll come back and talk about it as a whole. My name is Billie Eilish. Billie Eilish. My name is Billie Eilish. My name is Billie Eilish. My name is Billie Eilish. Year five. That's good. Uh, I think it's October 18th, 2017. It's October 18th, 2018. October 18th, 2019. October 18th, 2020. The date is October 18th, 2021. I'm 15. I'm 16. I'm 17. I'm 18. I'm 19. I am for sure a billion times more confident, confident than both of those years. I'm, I feel like I'm probably the most confident I've ever been in my life. It's true. Uh, yeah, no, nothing will ever top that 2019 ego. <laughs> I was feeling myself, that is for sure. It's because I had been so miserable for so long that I finally wasn't, and I just never shut up about it. But I've been, I've been good. I've been good. I mean, I'm starting to have, like, an adulthood, which is new for me. And very exciting, and I... I've had new experiences and new people and lots of love. I don't feel <laughs> lying. <laughs> I do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Yep. Yeah. But I don't fucking care. I really don't care. Like it's like, it's the kind of pressure that's like also hits me, and then I don't care. Like I know. And, like, it's in my brain that people expect a lot from me and that they expect this and they want me to do this. And this is just me trying to convince myself that I didn't care. <laughs> Every single one. Every single one. I know that I cared and I was just literally coming up with some stupid quote that would make me pretend that I didn't care. 80,000 people is way easier than performing in front of 80 people. That's true. I used to be just filled with these, like, inspirational quotes. Isn't it interesting that she just said performing in front of 80,000 people is more difficult than performing in front of eight people? I just think this might be applicable to our youth. Like, as we're in a smaller, more intimate setting with youth, it might be more difficult for them to share with us uh, sometimes than when we're in a larger group because there's kind of safety in numbers. Just like ready to go all the time that I didn't even agree with most of the time. Kind of crazy. Every time I see an interview from that period when I was like 16, I'm like, Pfft. everything I said was so stupid. Like not even stupid. It just was like not what I was actually thinking. I was thinking like, I'm overwhelmed. I hate this. Everybody expects something from me. I don't have anything to give them. I fucking suck. My jewelry is cool. <laughs> I want tattoos. I want a car. That's all I was thinking. Like I was not thinking. How different is that from the youth that we work with? I think it's a lot the same. They probably uh, don't always tell us their honest thoughts and feelings. They tell us what they think we want or they're trying to convince themselves. They're telling themselves that so that they think because they think that's what they should be feeling. And then what do they want? They want exactly what Billie Eilish wants. That stuff. Uh, I feel a lot of pressure, but I, I also would say like back then, I was more loved. I was pretty, I was pretty overall like loved, I would say, to be honest. And so I was like scared because I really wanted to keep that love. And now like tons of people hate me. So I'm not worried anymore. I'm like, oh, okay, well, if you like me, like maybe you don't, you don't. Shows are like the one thing that I feel like I've ever been good at. I know that sounds stupid, but it's like the only thing I've ever done that made me feel like, I belonged, keeping my family safe and, you know, staying up. Cute thing to say. I second that for sure. I was really just falling apart, not being able to do shows because they are the thing that makes me feel the best that I am. 
it, it, it feels like the best that I can be when I'm on stage and getting to do that again. I was like rewound. Like I'm a music box and I can be in a bad mood before a show and then come off stage and I'm completely rejuvenated. It like winds me up. It's crazy. So yeah, I agree with that one. I've had some conversations with Bieber about this. Ariana has been really cool about stuff. Even like Katy Perry told me that I could reach out to her whenever. Gaga has said it to me before. It's, you know, it's nice to, to hear from people that like have gone through this and know what it's like. I guess I turned to my mom, honestly the most in this in this period I feel like no matter all the people that have you know similar things that I've been through or have similar lifestyles or have you know advice to give I feel like my mom still beats them all <laughs> even though she's new to this just as I am you know meaning fame and this kind of world but my mom has a very good way of looking at the world and she's the, the main person that I, I go to and like literally like the, almost the only person. So, my mom. My brother is my best friend. My brother is my best friend. My best friend is Phineas, but he is also my brother. We got Drew, we got Zoe, we got Laura, we got Shark, we got my family, my brother. Those is my best friends. I got a lot of good friends. Phineas is definitely one of my best friends. My mom, my dad, blank, 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 are the other best friends. <laughs> nice. Okay. My name is Billy Island. I knew that was gonna happen. Um, okay, nice. So after after watching that video, um, would love to get some reflections and some thoughts uh, from you all as you're watching that video, maybe for the first time, or maybe some of you have seen it. For me, when I first saw it, it was definitely the first time. Um, so we have a poll that Raquel just published. You should be able to have a little pop up that says, which Billy are you? And you can go to go to the poll and see which one of the Billies over the years, you feel like you maybe resonate with the most um, to just kind of get you thinking about it. And then what we would really love is if anybody is brave and confident and or not confident, but still brave to uh, unmute and share a little bit about what kind of surprised you or what was interesting or lame or not so cool or whatever about this video, um, any reflections that you'd like to share. Um, if you want to raise your hand and can unmute um, or certainly can use the chat to share a little bit about um, what hit you from this video. And Raquel, I can't really see the attendees. Yeah. So if you can help on if anybody's raising hands or anything like that. Roberto, it sounds like, or it looks like you have your hand raised up. If you wanted to share something. Uh uh, yeah, uh, I mean, it just, the one thing that stood out to me was uh, con consistently her brother was her, like, best friend, you know, like that consistent, supportive, um, I don't know what their age gap is, if, if he's much older or younger, but um, I feel like like that's a key thing to to take note of is, like, that consistency and being there for her um and having that regular best friend and tor towards the end you know she's just like blank 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 you know maybe consistency what wasn't there changes um but the fact that phineas was um is important to me awesome thank you judy i see your hand raised yeah similarly but different i i found it um, interesting how, you know, as a teen, she was very outwardly focused on support and mentorship. And then um, as she, you know, got the ripe old age of what, 20, 21, um, she like leaned back into her relationship with her mom as the one she goes to force for like leaning on. But then, you know, that flip of like, it used to always just be the, the, be the best friend was the brother now she's kept the best friend, you know, brother, but now she has 
other best friends and she's more private about it. So it's a different kind of like lean on my mom, but have more friends. Nice. Thank you so much for that, Judy. Lindsay. Hello. Hi. Um, at Friends of the Children Southwest Washington, we talk a lot about um, like re-meeting our youth over and over again during um, the course of our time with them. We are a long-term mentoring program. And this just reminded me of that so much. That's such a great concept of re-meeting our youth over the time, especially youth that go to Echo One. I'm thinking of one young man in particular who, when I first started meeting with him, we would sit in a room together and the depression and sadness coming off of him was palpable. You could feel it. Sometimes we would just sit in the same room and he would just weep. You know, that kind of weeping, not just crying, but weeping. Um, but now, after it's been a couple years that he's been inside, um, now he has goals, he has joy, he is energized to participate in a good way in things. So it is almost like re-meeting a new person over again. Um, like every year can be so vastly different as our youth are exploring themselves. And so it just reminded me that we're gonna have to re-meet them many, many times. Yeah. Anyone else? Feel free to use the chat also um, if you don't wanna unmute. Raquel, any reflections that you've had? I know you've seen this video a lot but anything that that you want to share yeah i mean i i have seen this a couple times on every time there's always something new that i like focus on but um i think it was said like in like the beginning year she was basically saying things and then as she got older and reflected she was like that was a lie i was just kidding i don't know why i was saying that and so especially working with youth today um i see that all the time with like a fifth grader who says something and they'll bring it up um, I'll bring it up to them when they're in like sixth grade and they're like, that was so cringy. I did not say that or just completely vast change of like their, um, what they like me now or what they identify with now. So um, it's cool to see in this video, but also with, you know, the. I think there's this thing in identity formation too, where you try on different identities. So a young person might try on what it's like to be a diva or they might try on what it's like to be an athlete or try on these other identities that they see out in the world that they might admire and want to be. And then over time, they develop into their own identity. So they're trying on things and ideas that may or may not suit them. And uh, they might just be like, this is what I want to be because like a diva, maybe Lady Gaga is what they want to be or Billie Eilish is what they want to be. But in reality, they are just whoever they are. The students that we work with. Nice. Um, and I'll just share real quick that the main thing that always hits me with this video is thinking about how, and I, Raquel, you mentioned maybe that they've continued to do these videos um, over the past two years since this was only through 2021, but um, very curious to see, you know, how the years continue to progress and she looks at her own 2021 self that seemed like she really had things figured out and you know really was being more um you know connected with who she is and who she wants to be and maybe that looks really different or quote unquote cringy to her um a few few years later too so just that it just identity continues to evolve and then it makes me think of my own own identity and i feel like i'm the same person but maybe i am really different if i looked at um, little snapshots of, of time over the years. Yeah, and as we're filling out those polls, I'm seeing 88% of you all have selected reflective Billy. So you're um, relating to the reflective belly or, or Billy or reflecting in what um, the past couple of years have looked like or what has changed. Love it. Love it. I, I think I, yeah, I thought I saw a hand too. Is there somebody else? Oh, nice. Oh, Pam. Hello. Hi. Um, I was just 
kind of thinking about what Lindsay said about re-meeting your youth. And I feel like I love that term and that idea because we also have long, really long-term mentors that might be with a kid from age 10 to age 20 or something. And, um, and that is such an identity formative period where they're going to be trying things and figuring out who they are and what they, what they want to stick with for their adult years and stuff. Um, so I love the idea of re-meeting, but I also like when Billy says she's kind of relying on her mom, like there is also this anchoring of like, how do you, how do you let kids like, I don't know, let your mentee explore and try on different identities while also helping them stay rooted to who you really see that they are at their core or like, so that's just the tension I'm kind of sitting with, I guess. Maybe it's how do you become an anchor in the youth's lives so that they have the freedom to explore who they are in a safe way. And then Patty shared in the chat, my values, thoughts don't change as much as my approach that depends on my audience. So looking at your own, or Patty sharing a little bit about your own, um, evolution over over time love that um sweet let's do one more um share kathy, out kathy it looks like it's your hand I, I really loved seeing the change in her um in her younger years you know she was um very closed off she didn't make eye contact with the camera she didn't smile much at all in the first few um and then she started to smile more and more and then she got a little cocky and confident, but then she kind of came back around and she was very at ease with herself and she really grew into herself and knew who she was. And she was confident in that. And um, I just thought that transformation was amazing to watch. Yeah. Love, it. Love it. Okay, we're gonna keep, keep on go into the next and you can kind of think about this video as it relates to as we get into some of the specifics of um, the identity exploration that the mentee mentors and mentees that we were working with do so let me uh go to the next slide and a bunch of words on this one go ahead <laughs> nice um so yeah um we want to take a page out of billy's interview um by having our mentors and mentees um, intentionally have conversations around identity. And so the way that we do that is we um, support with having specific topics um, and prompts that mentors and mentees can have in conversation. We recognize this is only a small portion of what, like all the things you can talk about surrounding identity, but we tell our mentors to look at these as like um, conversation starters and how to deepen those conversations um, following these prompts. And so as you can see, um, we have some examples so for um if they're talking about community with their mentees um one of the questions is the spaces and places where i feel the most myself are blank and why and then having a conversation um that goes beyond that as well uh, some other examples for voice or i'm unique because or my voice is powerful because um and then lastly with heart um I am triggered, when I am triggered or angry, I appreciate when others do this. Um, and so um, we share these kind of topics with each of our students and mentees, or the mentees and mentors um, to have conversations. And I'll just like to, to just zo zooming out from the, you know, Billy video where we're great, actually able to see the progression over many multiples of years. And a lot of you commented on, you know, how uh, she showed up in different ways in that video um but that also was because of the very like specific and detailed questions that really quickly i wanted to share this um i'm going to share this tab um this is a poem template that you can use with youth to help them write a poem about themselves which is this voice development process or voice identity questions that helps them see who they are um and so they just fill in the blanks i am whatever uh the idea is they put their name in first right so i am terry i wonder how youth develop i hear the voices of 
those who cry in the night, um, things like that. So uh, you can do it as a mentor with a mentee together. And it's really about who you are and it's about identity, but it creates it in a, a poetic way. So there's all kinds of way you can do identity exploration together. Oh, wait a minute. I think I need to get back to presentation mode. I forgot to do the right button presses. So here we go. Um, all right, we should be back up and I will do better next time. The, this is the Rainier Athletes version of that is, you know, we want to be able to have students and mentors actually ourselves be able to reflect on our um, identities and as they evolve or uh, to me, it's really important that uh, you never ask a mentee to do something that you're not willing to do. Get enhanced in different ways over the years. Um, and so, but that starts with having like very uh, relatively easy to use, hopefully guidelines um, that mentors and mentees can start having these conversations and then to be able to revisit them over and over again um, in different ways over the years. So, oh, and then I get to actually show on the next slide. These are some examples of actual Rainier Athlete students um, that I shared a little bit, uh, answers to some of these, these topics and questions. So um, you can read the, the slides. Um, this is from a few of the middle schoolers that we're working with. Um, I love the, the first one from Alexa. Something that makes me unique is the way I love people. Others don't love the way that I do. Uh, and I'm really excited as she keeps going through middle school to see if and how that changes or if that's something that really stays consistent um, with how she looks at herself. Um, so see, these, these are some of the examples that as mentors and mentees are discussing on a week to week basis, um, some of the, the responses that are coming up of how the students are viewing themselves um, and that make up their identities. Nice. So, nice. Okay, I'm gonna go give another 30 seconds here in case you wanna look at the other ones. Okay. Nice. Thanks, Patty, for sharing some well, they in the chat. Talk a little bit about. Mm, we're often looking for youth to be proud of themselves, yet we also, oh, it's like sending mixed messages. We're also noting that it can sometimes look like bragging or having too much of an ego um, to be prideful. And so we want to downplay. That's something that is really annoying to me is if you are good at something and you say that you're good at that thing, it's viewed as bragging or being prideful. But I think that we can take away the value judgments. I mean, you can be good at math and you're just good at math or you're good at uh, public speaking. Just be good at public speaking. You know, we don't have to say that's prideful or any of those kind of things. Let's take those judgment judgment words out of there and just let people be good at what they are messages love that i don't have an answer for that but i love that, that i think noticing it is is a big piece there okay we're going to go to the next slide sorry Raquel. okay there we go nice so um a tool that our mentors use when having these conversations around surrounding identity with their mentees um, is called Mindful Inquiry. And so this is essentially a practice that helps support self-discovery and actively furthering the storyteller story. So in this case, it would be um, your mentees. Um, this was something that, um, you know, took me, I'm still learning, I'm still growing and figuring out, you know, how it goes. I think it was, it was very easy for me growing up to sort of take over someone else's story or if they were sharing something and then me relating and then making it then about me or vice versa, um, having a conversation and then someone coming in being saying, oh, I did this too, but in my case, and then kind of shifting over. So the practice of mindful inquiry is um, actively furthering the story of the storyteller. Um, and there has to be that genuine interest and curiosity um, when you're having those conversations with your mentees so that they can continue saying more, telling more um, out of the questions that you ask using mindful inquiry. So. I, I just was gonna add, 
many of you in being in the mentoring world may be very familiar with this tool of mindful inquiry and this practice of mindful inquiry. Um, it certainly was not developed by Rainier athletes. And a super easy method of doing mindful inquiry is the three, two, one method where the person before you talks for three minutes about whatever it is, then you reflect back for two minutes and then the person before you reflects on what they heard from you. So you're providing affirmation and noticing and all that kind of stuff. And then they, the person before you is able to pick up on that. That's a real formal way of doing it. But just if you don't want to use the formal structure of doing that, think about having the youth talk to you and then how you reflect back to that, what you've heard to raise up new learnings to help them further their story, to advance who they are as a person, not putting judgments in there, but helping them notice the goodness in their story, the blessedness or the sacredness of their story. Trainings from Mentor Washington trainings to Pacific Education Group and so on and so forth that um, are helping improve our own uh, understanding of mindful inquiry and practicing around mindful inquiry. So um, if you're familiar with it, awesome. Take that for, for what it's worth. If, if you're not, um, we're just trying to give like a super high level understanding. So then hopefully when you um, we have a chance to break out one more time and practice, um, you can you can use it. So the examples of actually using mindful inquiry are kind of the words to help further the story of the storyteller um, are kind of these, these uh, sentence stems, if if you will. So, um, for example, I'll do a quick example with Raquel. Raquel, what is a value that's been really important to you recently? Um, thanks, Jacob. I I think as I've gotten older, a value that I have kind of honed in on is like my family and the importance of family. I love that. I love family. I love your talk. You're telling me about how you've gotten older with that. Tell me more about how that's progressed as you've gotten older. Nice. Um, so that was a perfect um, uh, use of mindful inquiry there. Um, it's the way Jacob kind of like acknowledged what I said and then said, tell me more, you know, that is getting me to open up and, and want to say, like, tell him more of where I was coming from or why I said that. Um, and so that's just a small example of what mindful inquiry could look like. Um, and so now what we're gonna do is send you guys into breakout rooms once again. Okay, I'm gonna skip past the breakout rooms, hopefully. And let's see, um, can yeah, not there. They're still in the breakout room. Sorry, I'm doing- That's coming up, we'd love to hear from y'all. And we can raise hands again and Raquel can help facilitate right. that. Here we go. Mindful inquiry reflection discussion. Oh, I guess they don't have the people back. This is just the beginning of that. That's I felt really like her instead of because mindful inquiry isn't a term that I've heard before. All right. Got so well, if you were forward. someone who was speaking, who was Oh, darn it. All right. Welcome back. <laughs> Rejoining, I hope that was fun for everyone to get to know maybe one one person a little bit more um, in your breakout groups. Um, I also just want to acknowledge, I know, I think you all don't get much of a warning when we come back. So hopefully there was a little bit of uh, accepting of non-closure if somebody was in the middle of a statement when we just closed those breakout rooms. So um, hopefully that wasn't too jarring, but welcome back and thanks for um engaging that and and testing it out yourself um raquel just posted another poll to ask a little bit about your um use of mindful inquiry as a tool and as a practice would love to know a little bit more if that's something that you've used before or not um thanks judy that's exactly what we're looking for middle of talking middle of talking but used to it actually i don't want you to be used to that but that's okay um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, please, if you can respond to the poll, that would be great. And um, in a similar way, when we shared a little bit after the Billy video, would love to hear some reflections or thoughts from anyone of how the breakout went. So if you were someone who was speaking, who was kind of sharing your response, um, how did it go? How did, you know, what, what questions that you heard from others helped further your story um, or, or not? Anything that, that's coming up, we'd love to hear from you all. And we can raise hands again and Raquel can help 
facilitate that. You can also use the chat too if you don't want to unmute. Emberly, hello. Hello. Um, and somebody in my group mentioned um, instead of, because mindful inquiry isn't a term that I've heard before, but motivational interviewing is. So we are kind of talking about the relationships between the two because um, it kind of seems a little bit similar. It's exactly what I was thinking earlier also. But um, something that a couple people in my breakout group were actually colleagues of mine. And so they were using a lot of the, like, I heard you say this, tell me more about that, but also kind of put in some of like, I've noticed this about you mm -hmm. um, when inquiring more. So I thought that that was. I would also say what's important in these, if you're doing a reflection with noticing is that you do it with a, a humbleness that you can't say, I noticed this about you. And because you're noticing could be totally off the mark. So um, doing a correct me if I'm wrong, but I seem to be noticing blah, blah, blah. So uh, inserting a willingness to be wrong. Interesting. Thank you, Amberly. Roberto said in the chat, it helped seeing how other people would have responded to my comments in order to have ideas on how I would respond to the youth I service. What are some questions that you might ask a youth or some statements that you would, that would invite further reflection about who the youth are or how we build them up? If you uh, can type them into the comments below and we can collect some of that, uh, those ideas. Judy, hello. Hi. I I felt really like heard. It was a really nice feeling to have people like I don't know. It was it was very very interactive. My group was amazing, by the way. Hands up to all of y'all. Um, just really like you know they they did the process the way it was laid out, and as a, as a result, I felt like they were just extra listening. It was just cool how amazing it would be for our youth if they always feel heard. I'm gonna fast forward through this a little bit because it's a little bit slow. Let's see if I can do this properly and get past this section. I'm clicking forward this see and share. Let's go back a little Maybe bit. A little bit more online too and mentor washington resources as well okay i'm gonna move us forward let's get to our next slide there we go um okay so the purpose of sharing this slide is actually this is like rainier athletes specific the mentor the mentees that we're working with the mentors that are working alongside of them um just wanted to kind of show what a um weekly kind of culmination of this identity exploration process looks like for the students that we're working with. Um, so we talked a little bit about that the mentors and mentees are, you know, asking some of these questions, some of which you you reflected on and answered yourselves today. Um, and then the mentee is actually having that being added to this physical sheet of paper that we're calling an identity journal. And so you can see that's at the top of this um, sheet of paper and they're actually tasked with going around to other folks in their core community so in this case specifically their teachers um, that see them every day that see how they interact in class but may or may not know a little bit more about that student's unique identity um, and so the purpose of it is to provide this little snippet of a statement at the top of this identity journal um, for the student to go up to each one of their teachers well, this is a really interesting idea of having an identity journal that is then affirmed by other people <coughs> in the youth's lives. I wonder if I wonder what that looks like for us. It might be uh, 
totally not doable, but maybe maybe it is something that we could leave like a little index card with the youth and they put their statement about themselves. Like, I am a person who is good at loving others or whatever it is. And then you initial it and then say, why don't you get your staff person to initial it and one other person that you trust here at Echo Glen. I don't know. Something to think about. Every single day. Um, and share a little bit more about their unique selves, whether it's in or outside the classroom. Um, so that's kind of how that works with the Rainier Athletes model specifically. Um, just felt like wanted to kind of close the loop on how this all ties in for the Rainier Athletes world, um, but certainly understand everyone has a little bit of a different mentoring model um, that you're using. And just wanted to glance at my notes, make sure. Oh, um, and then this is also, again, just a tool. So just like Mindful Inquiry itself is a tool, this physical sheet of paper is a tool for the students to continue to share more of their authentic selves with their core community. Um, but also we see students do this in all sorts of ways, You know, whether they're playing soccer um, at home with their family, wherever they happen to be. Um, this is just that practice and, and tool to use. And then as they continue to progress, um, they, they might start doing that just naturally in their, in their everyday lives. Anything, Raquel, that you wanted to add with this slide? No, oh, I, I, I've noticed that it has been a helpful kind of um, tool or resource for the students to use, especially when we say core community, um, we mean like, you know, their teachers or their parents, like they get to go and see and share the identity statements that have come up. Um, at least in my experience, there wasn't a lot of people that you know, knew how to talk about identity with me, or I didn't really have those intentional conversations. And so um, our mentors, you know, with these resources, kind of having that implemented into the conversations while they're checking in, also seeing, you know, everything else that's going on in their lives is super helpful. Um, and so I've seen that, you know, it's helped our mentees kind of be able to say, oh, yeah, this is my identity statement, or this is what I believe in, or what I agree with. So um, yeah, that's how we we use that identity journal. Nice. And then, yeah, just to wrap that in. Really quickly, I just did a quick Google search on identity journals and identity journal prompts. And there's a lot of stuff out there so that could give you ideas about questions to ask if you wanted to. And back into the, the well-being, the hope um, of, of this conference in general, it's, it's the connection between the students sharing their identity with more folks in their community. And we start seeing the community you know, those teachers, those coaches, the other folks in that student's life, um, supporting that student more deeply and ultimately increasing that sense of belonging and and then personal well-being. Um, so that was really our main connection with the hope and well-being piece here. Nice. So that is it for us today. Thank you for joining us and having conversations and learning about identity exploration with us. Um, uh, all right, so we will stop sharing there and perfect, it's completed. Um, I appreciate what they have to say about identity development um, and how we talk about identity. I think in our current political arena, identity is very politicized, but you know, identity is simply who we are and helping each other discover who we are and be the best person that we can be is really one of our goals for ourselves and for others, that we lift each other up in our own identities and not trying to put our identity onto other people or let other people put their identity onto us. Be who you are, ground yourself, um, know who you are and help youth uh, develop their own identity that helps them have hope that gives them agency and a path forward in their lives. All right. Thank you for going all the way. Please like and subscribe. Uh, we, I will be doing more of these reactions so we can get these uh, this information into all of your hands. Thank you.